Hi, my name is Marina Georgieva and I would like to introduce you to my metadata design project which I developed for the metadata class. This class was part of my MLIS degree program. The title of the project is Picturesque Churches of Bulgaria. The purpose of this project is to design a complete metadata schema for an imaginary but yet realistic cultural heritage organization. This project demonstrates my understanding of concepts, principles, practices and applications of the metadata project development process, as well as um, some of the most uh, common metadata schemas as Dublin Core and MODS. The project comes in five parts, as the third part is the most important one for all the metadata creators. Part 1 the application scenario description. This part provides more information about my fictitious organization, the organizational context, the organization affiliation right here, the project purpose which in this case is promoting um, Bulgarian, Bulgarian cultural heritage sites in order to increase the flow of foreign tourists. This digital collection aims to intrigue users interested in history to visit Bulgaria in order to learn more about its cultural heritage. The first part also provides information how the community can contribute to the collection by providing donations of resources. Um, perhaps uh, the most important uh, information provided in this section of my project is the selection for inclusion of resources and how it is made. Briefly, all the resources need to be of historical and cultural significance. This first part also discusses the digital content and how the analog resources, right here, and how the analog resources are processed in order to preserve their best quality. Information about the data interchange with other cultural institutions is also provided. All the metadata fields are mapped to qualified Dublin Core and MODS for participation in the Open Archive Initiative for Metadata Harvesting. Part 2 of my project focuses on the fu uh, functional requirements which correlate with my local metadata elements. There is an overlapping in some of the most important metadata elements which participate in different functionalities. For example, the church type elements are assigned both uh, searching and browsing functionalities due to their significance for easy resource discovery here uh, church type and these are the different controlled vocabularies used and it participates the browsing and the searching functionality. Basically the functionalities I considered important for my fictitious digital collection are browsing. It is both browsing by icons and by drop-down browsable menu for some of the elements. Searching is also available for the most important metadata elements as it can be um, subject search and keyword search in the specified metadata fields. In addition to the subject and the keyword search I considered that fielded search by some elements could also facilitate the user and promote better navigation in any potential digital collection. The fields, uh, fielded search elements are listed right here. Last but not least, the faceted navigation assigned to some of my metadata fields additionally help the user to retrieve digital resources more efficiently. The faceted navigation could be represented as filtering options available on the left side of the main result list. These are the fields, the metadata fields that can be assigned faceted navigation. 
Part 3 of my project, like I mentioned, is the most important part, um, which is actually the most important document for every digital collection. It promotes consistency and facilitates the metadata creator during the process of creating new records. The input guidelines and the examples for each metadata field are very, very convenient. Um, here you see the table that I developed for this particular project. Uh, so my metadata application profile consists of several columns. The first one right here represents, it is actually a long table, it spans three, four pages, and there are some notes underneath at the end of it. So the first, the first um, uh, column represents the local element for each particular collection. It is followed by a brief scope note right here, the definition for each of the fields. And then comes the obligation right here. If an element is mandatory, required if available, or recommended, or it can be omitted. The occurrence, which is the next column right here, provides information if an element is repeatable or non-repeatable. One of the most important columns is the vocabulary encoding scheme, this one. Um, it, um, it is a convenient quick reference guide which controlled, which controlled vocabulary is used in each of the metadata fields and it also provides hyperlinks to the particular controlled vocabulary, vocabulary web page for searching controlled terms. For instance, if the metadata creator would like to search for, um, let's say, church type and um, vocabulary is thesaurus of graphic materials, he simply needs to click on the hyperlink and it will be take and he will be taken to the Library of Congress um, web page where he can search for the term. Um, let's go back and this um, these two columns represent the um, mapping uh, the mapping to Dublin Core and to mods and actually the local metadata fields are mapped to the most appropriate qualified Dublin Core and MODS fields as this facilitates the institutional data interchange. <laughs>